What's going on, everybody? Um, I am. What should we call it? Let's see. Uh, we are gonna go through the um through the juniors' uh, head sculpt, and uh, we're just gonna see how they're doing. Um, so let's take a look. Who is first? Who is first? First on the chopping block is Karen. Karen got this one in quick. All right, Karen. So um, we're still running into similar issues in terms of how far back this is going. And you still have a very feminine uh, jawline right here. Okay, because it's very short and it's behind the ear instead of in front of it. So please... Um, don't do that, because uh, I'm going to start grading on skill. So make sure you pay attention, and if you don't know what's going on, you need to let me know. Okay, um, so if we're going to put the skull in here, the orbit is not going to go that far back. We're going to go about that far back. Okay. And then your temporal line is on the side of the head instead of on the temple. So again, we need to uh, mark this in. And your ears, okay, maybe just a tad high. Okay. Um, and then if this is going to be the bottom of the orbit, then it needs to be like that. Okay. And then now we can go in here and reinforce this temple. Okay. And if you want to get a brow, you just go around the um, skeletal structure of it. Okay. And then we also need the frontal bone, which is the forehead. Right now, your forehead's very, very small and right here. What needs to be is further up. Right there, okay, and then kind of even this out because we saw with the skeleton that the cabella sticks out um, a little bit further than everything else. Okay, and then let's check the size of the eyes. Too large. Okay, we went over this in class, so uh, we can't make this mistake again, or we will have to start counting off. Okay, we need enough room for the eye and everything else around it. Okay. Alrighty, so let's turn transparency off. And uh, let's get those eyes a bit closer, somewhere around there. Okay, and um, let's go here. And it's just a little bit too far back. We don't need it to go that far back in the skull. All right. We'll just go right around there. And then it's a little bit more easier to manage in terms of um, Fixing the shape. Okay, so let's go back to the eyes and just move them up a bit. And okay, so again, we got that going. And we know that the medial cancel tendon is going to lead in 68% of the time, 70% of the time. And um, we also need to bring this here, but now we're also moving the bone. So we need to move that, and we need a little triangular shape right here for the glabella. Okay. And then over here, we need more for the um, for that right there. Okay. And we will we need the angle of the zygomatic to be like this, not like that. Right. Okay. 
and then we need to leave some room for the orbital socket. And we got that forlorn look in the skull. We need to hit that as well. And let's see. Ramel, what's going on, dude? Um, I'm doing critiques for my students, so won't be responding much to the chat, but I appreciate you being here. Um, so we're going to put the zygomatic down, the uh, inferior margin of it should line up with the bottom of the nose, which it does. And then right here, we just need, we need a little bit more space right there. And I'm just going to get rid of these lips because we haven't gone over it yet in class. Yeah. You see, we have a much stronger skeletal structure going on or a uh, skull-like structure. So we can really start placing these um, these muscles on here a whole lot easier. All right, just responding to messages. Alrighty, so, um, okay, so here we go, here we go, here we go, we got that, um, and then we can probably add a little bit more length here to really get that angle of the jaw that we need, or the, um, the angle of the mandible, not the jaw, because that's the angle of the jaw right there. Okay, and one more thing, we just gotta have a little stronger indication that it's not going past the ear, this jaw is not going past the ear. Okay, um, and then we can mark in the master muscle right there if we want to. Okay. And then we need to fix this temporalis muscle because it's going blue, blue, blue. Okay. And again, um, we need to make sure that this ear is splitting the head. So we can probably move this forward a bit. And the widest part of the skull is going to be the back third, which we need to probably move this up, move the zygomatic out where the temporalis is going to feed into it. And probably what the, it just needs to come together a bit more here at the back like that. So we've got that boom, right? Because you, you had it kind of a little bit too subtle in terms of it coming back. Okay. And then uh, for Luke Cage, he's got a pretty wide brow so or, or a forehead. So we'll make sure we hit that. And then we can hit the uh, temporalis because he's got a very uh, definitive line between the temporal line and then his temporalis. So we got to make sure most of the bulk of the muscle is up where the temporalis connects to the temporal line, and then we can smooth that out into the transition as it goes into the zygomatic, right? You get a stronger skeletal or a muscular skull-like structure. All tongue-tied. Alrighty, so something like this. So, um, this is what we have, and this is what you gave me, okay? So we need a little bit more length. We need a little bit more length in the jaw, especially if it's going to be masculine. We need a wider chin if it's going to be masculine. And then we need a stronger indication of the brow, and we need to move our temple forward and really indicate our orbital socket more. Uh, we have a skull in class. I suggest you pick it up and look at it and rub your hands all over it and really get the feel of uh, what should be going on with the skull. And let me fix one thing because I see it even now. Okay, the, the angle of this is a little bit off. It needs to be something like that. And then we've got that boom, right? So before... It was really subtle. 
and now we've got that. Okay. And we can smooth that out. You know, we can refine and refine and refine and refine. But in terms of getting you up to speed, we need we need to be over here uh, on the right side um, very quickly. Okay. So if you have any questions or anything, just hit me up in class and we'll go over it. All right. Um, let's see who's next. Camilla. Camilla, 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 Camilla. Let's see. Luke Cage. Okay. So what we are missing is um, we need a little bit more beef here. And you can go ahead and pull this down from now on so you actually have a neck. You know, sculpt the entire neck. Don't just pull something out and make sure, and especially for a male, we have the Adam's apple creating some type of angle, right? And it should only dip down whenever it's getting towards the uh, sternum. Right, and this guy's pretty muscular, so we need to ensure that our sternomyoclastoid here, attaching to our mastoid process, needs to be um, kind of wide. Because if we look at bodybuilders, you can see like their neck. They they have a huge mastoid process, right? So they just got this huge neck going to, and then your um, parotid gland needs a bit more. Um, addition, you can see how deep that crevice was in there. Right. And now we can just taper this back. Okay. And we can go here, dip that in, redynamesh it, we're good. And uh, angle of the jaw, we're just going to hit that there okay so that's what i would start doing with your neck don't don't neglect this because it's very very important to sell the rest of the head you know um and again it's these these weeks you, you really need to be able to knock in this this zygomatic real real quickly okay because it's still off right your the superior margin of your zygomatic is up here at least that's what you're indicating and we know it comes from down here, right? At the bottom of the orbit, not the bottom of the eye or the top of the eyelid, but the bottom of the orbit, okay? So let's fix that. Let's see, all right, so right above the ear, um, ear hole, right around there is where we need to put the zyg zygomatic. Okay, dip that in there, okay, and then the inferior margin needs to go down to around the bottom of that, and so now we've got all this room to really sell this skull-like structure, okay, and um, especially for Luke Cage, like his brow is going to be a little bit more prominent, and then you're missing your frontal bone here, which is your forehead, right? Okay, and then we can also see that we probably could add a bit more length to his jaw. And um, your your master needs to be coming from right there. Okay. From right and uh, as soon as the um, Malar eminence starts turning. Okay. And got that. Got this. Got that. Okay. And we can really sell this front plane of the zygomatic a bit more, and then we can add some meat to it. But you really need to work on your orbital socket because uh, in the last few. They've been very weak in terms of its structure, so we need to uh, fix that. Okay. Okay. 
Ready? Um, and then we'll get to noses uh, soon enough. And we'll we'll get into all the planes and all the cartilage and fat and skin and all that, so you can really understand that more. Um, lips are pretty pretty good. Just make sure that your bottom lips are coming out from your top lip. And yeah, that's what I would work on. For you, you need to work on the placement of your uh, zygomatic. Oh, we could probably raise that up just a little. Okay. We need to work on the placement of that. And we need to um, work on our infraorbital furrow right here. So we can really sell this orbital socket. That little dip right there. And it's going towards the cancel tendons, right? And so you know, if this is where your orbital furrow is, you can grab your damn standard and you can just attach your cancel tendons right there. Right? And again, the top eyelid, 68% of the time, comes from within the upper uh, eyelid. And then we need, remember the tarsal plates that we're observing? We need to we need to hit that in as well. So superior tarsal plate and then the inferior tarsal plate should be a one to three ratio, right? One to three. Um, so we're just sketching this in, all that stuff, right? And then we got the lacrimal punctum, which boom gives us that hit, boom gives us this hit, and then we know we can dip the eye down if necessary. Okay. Looking at the canthal tilt, it's pretty much neutral. So I'm just going to nudge that down to where there's like a one to two degree canthal tilt. And again, we have a um, like a 17 degree um, tilt from the medial canthal down to the lateral canthal. So it should be like that. It should be flat. Okay. Um, and then we can, whoops, put this in here and have it come out, right? Add in there. Okay. Looks more like the rock now, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and and, uh, and we'll get to noses. So lips and all that, not worried about. I am worried about the your jaw placement, your zygomatic placement. Uh, we really need to uh, to work on that and uh, practice it. And if you need more clarification, just let me know. And I would be more than happy to provide plenty of examples and drawovers so that you can fully understand how to place your zygomatic. Because after this, um, after this week, I've got to start counting off if you don't place the zygomatic correctly. Okay. So, uh, there we go. Uh, let's take a look at who's next. Justin Gallardo. Justin Gallardo. All righty. So you got a lot done on this. Okay. Um, but again, we're missing major, major forms, right? That that can't go. Um, let me just rearrange things here. All righty, and let's see. So first thing we need to do is we need to fill in this area. So I'm just gonna get my form soft brush and I'm just gonna fill it in and then redynamesh it. Fill it in. So from angle of the jaw to angle of the jaw, smooth it out. And there we go. There we go. And then go ahead and pull the neck all the way down. Okay. Somewhere around there. We're going to refine it as we go. Okay. And again, with yours, we need to make sure that the neck is appropriate to the body style. 
we can't have a thin neck for someone who's supposed to be super, super strong. And, and then we just gotta respect the angle of the jaw or the angle of the mandible and make sure that angle right there, boop, right there, and then just soften it with uh, parotid glands. All right, dip that down in there. A little bit of an Adam's apple. And then we can really put in the sternomatoclastoid here. Okay, um, next, let's see, where are we? All right, so your eyes need to come down right about right there. And let's take a look at your eyeballs. Right around there. Moving forward. All right. Okay, so now we can see where we need to adjust this a bit. All right, so we need to need to go around the eye. I'm just gonna smooth this out. Okay. Um it's gonna be easier. So, and then I'm just going to mark over this. And just rough it in. I'm not worried about it being super uh, precise right now. And I'm just going to solo this out because I don't want anything influencing my brush. All right. As for right now, is I just knock this delicate part in. And bring that back. Okay, so now we can form this around the eye and just keep refining. And, okay, so this is confusing me a little, and we need to put in this knock here for the nose. And then if this is going to be the bottom of the inferior, or if this is going to be the inferior margin of the zygomatic, then your nose needs to come down. So your nose is too short, which is the reason you bunched everything up and didn't give enough room for that typical bella and the bridge of the nose. And then we need a stronger indication of the orbital socket. All right, so just make sure to Lock in this little forlorn look. Make sure it's it's indicated there. I'm just gonna get rid of these fibers because I'm not really concerned about the fibers. I'm more concerned about like the the time you spent on doing those fibers and everything. You should spent refining the skull. Okay, so we need to bring the temple forward. Okay, we can look up here. We see that's going way too far back. Okay. And then we can knock this in. Oops. Okay. 
and we can knock that in, kind of reinforce that area, and go back over it. Okay, and so now I see that my zygomatic, my malar eminence is really weak, and that the widest part should be right here so that the temporalis can feed into it. And then we can fill in all this. And let me get rid of those lips. Giving off the wrong impression of this character. And so now we see that we have very, very, very short mandible now. Okay, so we need to we need to give space to that. And then we've got even more space. So we can move that down. Okay. And then we've got we need to make sure we have like a 17 degree tilt. Somewhere along there. So what I want to see from you is a much stronger orbital socket. I want to see a much better placement of this uh, zygomatic. And uh, I want to see the widest part here around the temporalis, right? Because all this muscle has got to feed into there. So we got to make sure that that's where it needs to be, okay? And um, that's what I would do. Okay, so what we have and what you gave me. Okay, see? Yeah. You have a lot of these things going, but your your nose is off, your eye placement is off, your um, zygomatic is off, but you, you have like indications of the forms, but they're just not in the right spot. Okay, and also give a neck to the character from now on. All right, so let's see who's next. Jorge. Alejandro Gomez. All right, Jorge, you're sculpting backwards. What are you doing? God. All right, so click that hamburger menu, and I'm going to turn it around. Do 180 degrees. Okay. If you ever want to know if you're sculpting on the back or the front, this blue arrow should be facing you. So you just press a W on your keyboard. This blue arrow should be facing you. And if it is, then you're working in the right. Uh, or right side. Alrighty, so let's take a look. Let's take a look. Okay, so neck doesn't do that. Okay, we need to dynamesh this. I don't know why you never dynamesh. Why don't you dynamesh? <gasps> oh my. God, you subdivided? Mmm. All right, you just need a Dynamesh. Put this 128, Dynamesh it. There we go, okay? So, again, we need to put the neck in. All right, and at least, oops. And have it go down to the clavicle. And then we need to have for especially for a man we need to have this come out and then into the clavicle not in and then out to the clavicle okay and just OCD so make sure okay um and redynamesh it okay and remember we have this parotid gland back here so we shouldn't have that sharp of an angle. Okay. And then we need to fill in here. Please don't have just nothing underneath here anymore. There's skin, there's fat, there's age. Okay. Um, see, bottom of the orbital socket. Uh, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. All right. I'll give it to you. 
Okay. But what we got is um, this should be down here, this little angle. All right. So I'm going to do smooth this out. I'm going to put this over the eyes. And redyne my shit. Yeah. So we need to have a forlorn look for the skull, have it come down for the temple right here, and then come back and forward. Okay. Always a forlorn look in this. And then your angle, remember, the cobella comes out, it goes back down, and then it flares back out. So you need to have a bit more right there. And then we can knock in that temple. Okay. Um, so we got the superior margin correct. Uh, that's correct. Uh, let's get rid of these lips for right now. All right. And then we know that the master attaches to the front, but the problem is that we don't have enough jaw to finish the skull. All right. So we need to bring that down. Okay. And now, now we've got a space to play around. Okay. And there we go. There we go. And then we need to add a bit of a chin and stop having, whenever I have you sculpt a male, stop having it come to a point. All right, we need, um, need to have that there. It needs to be a little bit more prominent. Okay. And I just figured out who we're going to be sculpting on Tuesday. Okay, so um, there we go, and the Gobella should be out a little bit more, and then you just need to finish off the Gobella. It's just a little triangle right here. It gives you that cavity so that you can have that feed in, and then you can get your Emperor Orbital Furrow. You have enough space in here to get it. So, doing a little bit better, doing a little bit better. Um, your zygomatic is placed um, correctly. It's just you didn't give enough room to everything. So, for you, so far, you will get the A because you placed it correctly. So, unless someone else placed it correctly and did a better job at sculpting, then you get the A. Okay. We will see. We will see. And then most of the meat is going to be right around there. And let's see your head shape. It's a little parallel. A little parallel. I would um, bring it in at least here at the top. And have it flare out. And this ooh, ears need to split the head. Okay. They need to split the head on the front to back. So it should be right around there. Okay. And then we have a, we need to fill in that space back there. Okay. So we got that gland. We've got um, these uh, mastoid process right here as well. And so we need to make sure that's all indicated, okay? Okay, so something like that, okay? So what, where we are and what you gave me, okay? So we can see the length of everything, right? <clears throat> Pretty much it's all, you know, all this is in the same place. It's just that we had to pull everything down. You can see how weird this neck looks now, right? 
Okay. So getting better, getting better, getting better. All right. Ramirez, you are next. I just like saying that. Ramirez. I feel like I'm in like an 80s cop buddy movie. Alrighty, so uh, your lips are duck. You got duck lips. Okay. So that's the problem with that. Okay, um, you are getting better. You just need to knock that in right there and then have it come down. Okay. Your zygomatic. Ooh. Ooh. Should be a little bit lower. Little like you're getting better. You're getting way better. All right, and then the malar eminence. All right. Bring that down. And now we got this front plane. And what we need to do is uh we need to feed well. Okay, so we need the Gobella to not be concave anymore. Like I know it looks like that whenever someone furrows their brow, but that's not actually what's going on. And let's knock in this temporal line a bit better. Okay, and then we actually have we need a little bit more structure there. I think maybe overall it might be just wide. Let's take a look at the size of these eyes. I think they're huge. No, they're not. Hmm. Maybe let's bring them in a bit. Hmm. That's weird. Let's see. Alrighty. So let's bring that in. And this little angle needs to, this little temple, temporal. Uh, bone needs to go a little bit more in. And then we can also make sure that our zygomatic is creating this flat plane right here. Okay. And um, we need to bring our nose down to the bottom of our zygomatic. And again, I think we need to work on length of the mandible because everybody's got a really... Uh, long top face, and then when it gets to the jaw, you will just shorten it up a lot. So just make sure to give enough room and make sure for the males that you have that chin going. Okay. Um, and let's see. So now we got enough room for the frontal bone. Knock that in. And we are good. Okay, so that's what I would do for yours. And this eye is going back a bit too far, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, since you are watching these videos, I'll actually go through here and work this for you. Gonna work it. Okay, so super the balls on right there. Hey, look at the balls over here. Look at these fucking balls. Okay? The fucking nuts on this. Alright, so... We've got that going. Um, we can mark in the eyelid, just going back and forth. And then we can have the superior margin, or the superior tarsal plate. Take it in. Inferior tarsal plate. Move it out. Take it out, back up. And we can dig this in because we know there's a little bit of a concavity in there. Um, and then bring this back over here. Okay. And bring that down. Kick that up. Bring it back out. And I'm just making sure that these two are meeting, and then we have an inferior tarsal plate here. And we 
can bring this forward a bit. And now we've got enough room for the temple, right? And um, we're going to dig in right around here. Smooth it out. Like we need the tarsal plates to connect here, but there is a lot of con concavity here uh, going on around the um, orbital socket. Okay. So now what we can do is, oops, kick that in. And let's fix these eyelids a bit more because they're a little wobbly. There we go. There we go. Okay. And bring that back a little bit. Bring this back a bit because it's not that far forward. All right. Something like that. And also the widest part of the zygomatic is going to be right here where the temporal muscle is feeding into it. So we need to honor that. Ready? And a little bit more meat. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. And we just get that lower margin of the nostril. Okay, so that's what I would do for years. Let's uh, see after and before. Okay. A little bit longer on the jaw. Chin's a bit too wide. Alright, it should be right. It should be just as wide as the nostril nostrils are. You need a bit more of a... Um, of a frontal uh, plane right here where the zygomatic is, right? Right there, you need that little front plane. You need a stronger indication of the orbit and you need to be a little bit more confident because you're missing this line going up and down like right there. Okay? So you're missing that. So we need to fix that. And then your temple is going into the actual skull. So we need to make sure that that's not happening. This is still incorrect. I mean, but I'm just approximating these things because I got I to gotta go through a lot of these. But um, just uh, make sure that you have a forlorn look, which you, which you kind of have, but you just need this temple bone and make sure your eyes don't go too, they aren't too wide. Okay. And next, Alex. Alex, Alex, Alex. Let's see what Alex has been doing. Okay, much better than last time. Much better, but you're suffering from the same issue. You need to have a little bit more forlorn look and a stronger temple. Okay, and you're, um, this is going out way too far. Like, um, you have a bunch of wrinkles. I'm not sure what all this is. So, oh, so you think you're smart. You think you're smart. But you, oh, okay. So you think more detail is going to help you. All right. Well, it's not going to help you. Stop with the sculptress. Just stop it. You don't need that detail. Look, you don't need it. You don't need it. Don't put it in there. Sculptress, my ass. Think you're gonna, you seriously think you're going to get that past me? I'm going to see a huge difference in detail. <laughs> Alrighty, so I'm going to get rid of all that. Get rid of all this. Alrighty, so let's see your placement. Um, let's see where you were, were indicating. Okay, you're saying it's right here. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Okay. So it needs to go up and around. Alright, so it should come up like halfway for the temple bone. And then it should go around. Okay. Something like that. Okay. And then the widest part of the zygomatic is what? Where the temporalis is feeding into it. And then you have the male RMI. Okay. Um, that's lined up. Um, you need a little bit more of a chin. And um, your muscle, your 
mouth muscle is a little bit too long, but we haven't got there, so no worries. All right, so your your eyeballs, the problem is, is that they're just way too far forward. Okay, you have no uh, orbital furrow, and you have no front plane to your zygomatic, which is giving you all this structure, uh, which is confusing you on creating your structure, all right? So you need to have that going. Ready? So I'm going to show you how to do this. Okay, so it's over the eye. Just gonna create that. We're gonna really knock in the margin of the eye. Okay, and then you got the tarsal plate. You got the tarsal plate. Doop 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 doop. Okay. And at least we got it set up, and we'll go back to it in a second. All right, so we got that, and then we need, all right, so you've got a very neutral masseter, and we went over this in class where most of the mass is going to be here. So you need to have a little bit more of a finesse on these shapes. Okay, and it just comes through practice. If you're making mistakes, have someone call you out on it, and then you go back, right? And then your angle of the jaw is way too comical, like, that's way too comical. All right, so we need to fill that in, and then we can fill all this in as well. Because we don't want to get in the habit of having this, um, having a bunch of nothing under here. Because whenever you start attaching the neck, uh, you're going to be really confused. Okay, and then we have the mastoid process right here. That we need to have an indication of. Okay. So, frontal bone, you just need to have that, that little separation. There we go, and then we can just smooth out that transition, okay? Ready and uh, the superior margin feeds into the um, uh, into the canthal tendons here, okay. and so we know we can now fill that in and get that going. Ready and there we go. All right, so we kind of block that in. We can hit this more, dive that down a little bit more, and smooth that out. Okay. And then we can, oops, go in here with our damn standard. And now we know canthal tendons are going to be right here. And then the canthus is going to be right there. Um, and where's the eyeball? Is it there? Okay, so we actually need to move that. And yeah, your eyeball is way too big. No more grapefruits, okay? It should be about half the size. Should be about that big. So uh, now what we need to do is we need to put this around the eyeballs. Okay. And I mean, we can just mask this if we want to, right? And then just move this up. Make sure it's fitted around the eye. Okay, invert it, move this down, 
it's approximating all this stuff. And doing that. Okay, and I didn't need Sculptress. I didn't need any of that shit to knock in this form. Okay, you do not need to go over 128. So, and then we can just kick that in. Toss a plate. And we can make sure this is a little bit more believable. Okay, so going, having that go over, this coming from within, canthal tendons attaching to the infraorbital furrow, where we can find the bottom of our eye, and start going from there. Okay, and we haven't talked about the fat in the eye and all that stuff, so I'm not going to uh, sculpt that right now. But you do need to have um, a stronger structure for your orbital socket, or you're always going to have weird-looking eyes and faces. Okay, so um, work on that, um, get that skull in class and really put it in your hand. And I don't know, for me, I, like whenever I got that skull in my hand, a whole lot of things uh, started st sticking in my memory, memory in terms of um, forms and all that. Okay. And... There we go. Smooth that out a bit more. Okay. So we just I need a skeletal structure like this from you. Or a, a skull like structure like this. I need you to understand this if we're going to move on. Okay. Okay. So what you what we have and what we came in with. Okay, again, strong indication of the of the orbital socket, right? And it's this is feeding into the tarsal plate, okay? And that's going down, right? And we'll talk about fat and all that stuff. But then we need to, we see this wobble here in the, um, in the mandible, the jaw. And you can see how mine's a little bit softer, but still got the shape. And it's got the angle of the jaw right here, which you're missing. Uh, chin is okay. Just need a little bit more shape up here. Um, again, the infraorbital furrow. And your eyes are really just where where you need to spend most of your time. Okay? Uh, and really knocking in this orbital socket. Because if we can't get the, the eyes right, and we can't place those, and we can't get the proportions right, then everything else is just always going to be out of whack. So please spend time, hopefully, um, please, yeah, just please spend time <laughs> uh, studying the orbital socket, okay? So next is Salinas. Salinas. Let's take a look. Luke Cage Salinas. Alrighty, so um, again, we could probably shape this neck a bit better okay so i'm just gonna try to only affect this part okay because i think Something like this is what you were going for. Alrighty, so, um, all right, so just because, I mean, we haven't talked about it, but we have in the previous class, just gotta knock in that sterno mitoclastoid. Or sternocleidomast. Yeah, sternocleidomastoid. Yeah, that's what it is. And roughly it'd be around there. No clidomastoid. I always get those mixed up. I go back and forth with that. And you commit that to memory. Alrighty. Um, so something like this. Alrighty. 
So get that going. And we need to fill this in underneath here, smooth it out. All right, let's check your eye. Ooh. All right, zygomatics all, all the way up here. It needs to be right above your ear hole, not above your ear. Okay. So, and then again, it's placed in the wrong area. Okay, so we got to make sure we get this down uh, because I'm going to start counting off for it. Okay. So it needs to come up halfway to where the temple would be, and then it makes that curve. Okay. Alrighty, so just got my key shot eight beta key. Okay, so um, here we go. Let's take a look at the skull. Skull's fine, probably the best shaped skull. Um, so far, yeah, really good. Maybe um, because I'm me. Maybe a little bit more. Maybe a little bit more. Right, and again, you're missing. You're giving me Andre the Giant bro. Okay, so we need to ensure that we have that forlorn look right here, and we need to dig that in so we have enough room. All that, okay, and your glabella is chopped off, so we need to make sure we have that there. Okay. And we have the temple right here, coming down, and that's going to be the top right there. So now we've got enough room to play. And we know the zygomatic. See, so your yours is coming up. It should be right around here, right? So we need to dig that down, get this nice frontal plane for the zygomatic right here. Should be. Roughly around there, we can um, bring this in, lower it down, smooth out the lips. Okay, um, knock that in, and now we've got to make sure that this infraorbital furrow is feeding into the canthal tendon, right? So we know we need to move that back. Okay. So now we can start adjusting all this other stuff that you had here. And we need to also make sure that the widest part of the zygomatic is what? Where the temporalis is feeding it into. And there we go. So we can smooth that out, smooth it out. Uh, we need a little bit longer of a jaw. Boom, boom. Angle right there. And then indication of the master. Most of the bulk is right here. And a little bit more on the chin. Um, and that's a, that's pretty decent. Okay, so right around here where the canthal tendons are attaching to the infraorbital furrow, you can dig this in a bit. Right. Around. You can dig that in. Um, smooth that out. And we need a tarsal plate down here. So let's indicate that. And we know the orbicularis oculi always attaches to the canthal tendons. So we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. Uh, and then a little bit more room for the glabella, flatten that out for the plane, superciliary arches, feeding. All right, so this needs to feed into the canthal tendons as well, the, uh, the superior side. Smooth, smooth. Do, 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 do. Indicate, indicate, indicate. And something going on with the skull. There we go, okay. So something like that, we could even lower these eyes a bit, probably right around there. 
And just make sure they're equal distance around the eye. we go and there we go okay so what we have and what you came in with why is this mess okay there we go okay so th this is pretty good right here it's just again you need to put your Zygomatic coming right above the ear hole, not above the ear or any of that stuff. This hole right here, right above it, boom, from right there. And then you'll know that you need to uh, add a bit more to the bottom. I mean, it's roughly proportioned pretty decently, but we just need um, we just need a little bit more finesse, okay? Alrighty, who is next? KB! KB, KB, KB. And, oh yeah, I forgot. Mrs. Mrs. I like saving ZPRs. Alrighty. So, um, about the same quality as it was last time. Um, yeah, yeah, and your temples uh, placed placed uh, incorrectly. But let's go through this and let's start from what what I usually do. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just get this cranium locked in first. Okay, get this cranium in there and make sure the overall shape is good first. Like you, uh, and then bring this temple line. We'll we'll just smooth it out and resculpt it. All right, but right here is your ear hole, and so right above that, right above that, is where the zygomatic is going to come out. It's going to go up halfway to where the temple is, right, right around here, and then. Zoom over, and we just got to indicate it for right now because we're going to sculpt it all in. Okay, so now we know that we've got this temple bone right here that needs to, from here to here, needs to be kind of straight, and then it needs to come forward so we can get the orbital socket. Okay, and a little bit more redutch. Okay, uh, next we need to um, get the inferior margin. That's roughly going to be here, and straight across is going to be the nose. So yours is just a little bit too high. It needs to come down a little bit. Right around there, I'm just going to smooth all this out. Okay. Uh, and then we need to have the malar eminence here. And then we can have this nice flat plane, just, to, just for foundational purposes. You know, obviously it's not going to be the final output, but we need to have a front plane while we're um, blocking this out. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this forward so we have this nice frontal plane right there. Smooth that out. Okay, so um, we've got that blocked in, and then we know that, you know, the zygomatic actually dips back kind of like that. Okay, but roughly still have that orbit. And then here we can smooth that out and we can pull this down. Okay. And we can get that nice angle of the jaw. Again, the jaw is going to be in front of the ear. Okay. 
and I'm going to smooth the lips out because we haven't got there. Okay. So next thing we can do is we can start uh, proportioning our orbital socket. Okay. So right here, I'm just going to roughly scratch in a square where I want the orbital socket to be. And then we can go here and we can knock in that forlorn look in the skull, smooth it out. We can indicate the glabella right here, right? That little dip before your nose comes out. We can have the uh, nasal aperture being indicated right here. We know it's going to come down to the bottom. All right. And then um, chin's coming down to a point. And what we need to do, we need to lengthen this a bit. And we also need to add a little dip right there. Okay. So we can get, sell that masculine nature of it. Okay. And just going to put a little subtle angle of the jaw here. All right. So now what I need to do is I need to um, emphasize his brow a bit and then cut it off so that we've got the frontal bone right here. All right. And now I'm going to just swath back and forth on this, smooth out the transition, finesse it in, and there we go. Okay. Let's smooth that out. Let's see. Take a look. And then back here, we need to make sure the eyes are splitting the head. So we can pull that forward. And that the widest part is the back third. The widest part of the zygomatic is where the temple is feeding into it. And there we go. Okay. And we can bring that in a bit, a little bit more subtle. Okay, so the eyes, um, we need to dig that in right there, pull this out, okay, we need to have the infraorbital furrow, cancel tendons feeding into the infraorbital furrow, let's smooth this out, just so we don't get confused, okay. Uh, and then going to add a inferior tarsal plate, superior tarsal plate, and roughly indicate all that. Okay. Something like that. Okay. And then we can uh, smooth this out. Add this line right here for the master. Again, most of the mass is going to be where it um, ins inserts. Okay, and then we can add a little bit more of a chin, and then the barrel of the mouth. Okay, and I think it's a little bit too flat back here. And there we go. Something like that. Okay. So uh, what we have and what we came in with. Oh, was that it? That's not it. Oh, we have all the history. That's what we have. Okay. So roughly that's what we had. Okay, so again, a jawline is what you're really, really missing in the in the form of it. You need to work on your temporal um, temporal arc. Okay, and, and then as soon as you get that temporal arc, you know that you can have a straight line where that where that's going. Make sure you have a forlorn look on the uh, superior lateral margin of the orbit, and then make sure your canthal ten tendons are feeding into your infraorbital furrow and make sure you have a flat plane right here for the uh, zygomatic when it turns the malar eminence. Okay. Those are the big, big points that you need to uh, pay attention to. Okay. And finally for the juniors coming in at six, two, 
185 pounds, 38 inch vertical leap. Kenneth, the bomb.com Petrie coming in. Alrighty, so Kenneth. Um, no, uh, pr uh, perspective is not on. Uh, Gord, not on. Uh, I don't sculpt faces with perspective on. All right, so first thing is that you're sculpting like this way instead of front to back. So if you ever want to know what's front to back, just make sure that this blue thing is facing you. Okay. So um, I'm going to turn off symmetry. You're going to put this in the center. I'm going to bring up the hamburger menu so I can affect all sub tools. And I'm going to give it a 90 degree turn so we're in the right way. All righty. So uh, I'm going to turn off the hamburger menu. There we go. All righty. So in terms of skull structure, this is one of the much better ones. One of the much better ones. I like how you're indicating a lot of the muscle structure, uh, but uh, also a lot of the things are um, put in the right proportion. Like your the sky aid right here is just, just a little bit too high right here. Just a little bit should be right around there. Okay. Um, but I'm liking all these angles, um, liking the lip construction, all that. Um, and one thing that you just need to pay attention to is it looks very feminine because of how thin the neck is, right? So we need to make sure, oops, got to make sure, symmetry's on. We're going to make sure that the neck matches the bulk of the character, okay? So from here to there, and then we can feed this, and then we know we have some more room going in. And we'll be good. Okay, and we'll go over neck muscles in, um, in class for sure. Alrighty. So now he looks a little bit more masculine. Okay, so next thing that we need to do is we need to fix. It looks too long. Too long. Too long of, an, of a head. Somewhere around there is what we're looking for. Okay. And then we know that the tallest and widest part is in the back third. So we know we can dip this down. And we got to make sure that the cranium is right. All the angles and all the foundations of it are right. Because if we add hair to this, it's going to be on some wobbly ass cranium. And you're going to have hair going in and out, in and out. And not going to make any sense and you're going to try to put a hat on it and the hat's not going to, you know, and everything's just going to look really amateur. So we need to make sure that the cranium is set before we do any of that. Okay. And then uh, just probably due to my own, um, my own uh, adjustments to this, it lost its back third and we can bring that in and we need to have a bit more of a, dip right there because originally your skull is very um very neutral and we need to add some angles in there okay so let's talk about the infraorbital socket so roughly it's right around there okay and so we can kick that up around halfway where the eye is going to meet and then go around okay and then we can go down here to the uh, infraorbital, and now we can see that we're out of proportion, right? The, sh the nose is too short, lips are too high, and we can just bring all this down. Okay, so what I'm going to do, mask all that, try to mask all this, and bring that all down. And then we can probably add a little bit more there. And the next thing we need to do is we need to start knocking that in. The gobella, we need to start knocking that in. I'm going to start counting off for that, actually, with the gobella. Um, okay, and then 
that's fine. You just need a stronger indication of a uh, skull. A little neutral. Right. This actually looks like you. Did you sculpt yourself? Is that what this is? All right. And then we got the Malar Eminence, right, where it turns the corner. And we know the widest part's going to be where of the zygomatic, where the temporalis is feeding into it. Okay. Uh, we also know that these ears need to split the head. Okay, so we need to bring these forward. And by splitting the head, I mean uh, under you um, when you're looking down at it. Okay. And we could probably bring out that zygomatic as well. Something like that. We could probably lift that up a bit and um, knock that back, that down. And uh, we're going to reinforce this infraorbital furrow right here where it's attaching to the canthal tendons. And get that going. And we need to have a forlorn look on the structure of the skull. And there we go. Okay, and then just an overall, especially for masculine, you can really uh, hit that a little, a little bit more aggressively. Okay. All right, and then we can smooth that transition out. And I'm gonna smooth these lips out because we haven't gone over them in class. And just a little bit more right here on the frontal eminence. Okay. And we have a little bit of a bowing right here. And what we need to do is kind of finesse that a bit more. Right? A little bit more. And bring that out. Okay. Just a little, just a tad, just a smidge. Okay. And, um... Yeah, that's why we start with yours. You're getting better, though. Getting better. You're noticing a lot more things, and you're placing them, and um, and that's good. That's where it, what it's all about. You know, you don't have to do it right. You just got to do it, and then I'll uh, hopefully uh, instruct you how to do it better, and then that's it. That's all that needs to happen, right? And then you need to just do it better. Watch these videos, man. Watch them, watch them, watch them. All right, there we go. Okay, and we can probably get a little bit square on that forehead. Okay. And if you hear squeaking, that's my dog with her toy. There we go. So, um, what? And the eyes are done really well. Like the shape of them, sculpting them. You didn't use sculptress or anything. Alrighty. So, um, what we have, and what we came in with. Yeah. What we came in. Okay. Feminine, masculine. Okay. Really. Uh, the contributing factors is the brow, how prominent it is. You see how you can see that a little dip, uh, the temple line, angle of the jaw, and um, and the uh, malar eminence is sticking out um, a little bit more prominently than it would on a female. Okay, and also the the width of the neck is contributing to the masculinity of this. Okay, so. Uh, that comes, that is a close for, um, for the juniors. Okay. Um, I have freshmen as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize ZBrush and we're going to start with them as well. Okay. So let's see what we got. 2018 freshman Thor. All right. So who's first on this? 